Matthew's Message via Susie Ward, April 23, 2015. Web page, www.matthewbooks.com. With loving greeting from all souls at this station, this is Matthew. Happenings during the past months have prompted numerous light workers to ask and many others to ponder why is the free will of people who do terrible things given priority over the free will of people who don't want to be terrorized or killed? Beloved family, never has priority been given to anyone, nor could it ever be. Rulers of the universes are bound to honor Creator's gift of free will to every soul and God incorporated that edict in the laws that govern life in this universe. Like everything else in existence, the laws are energy and energy has no reasoning ability, no capacity for prioritizing or decision making about anything whatsoever. All energy can do is vibrate at one frequency or another in accordance with how it is used, and in our explanation, it is how people who live on earth use it. The orderly functioning of the universe requires a continuous balancing act to keep vibrational frequencies from becoming lopsided, so to say. And as microcosms of the universe who in every moment affect the state of it, souls have their own balancing acts. Prior to birth, they or better said, all of us, enter into agreements with other souls, and within the agreements are all of the participants' individual contracts that include whatever they need to balance other lifetimes. That whatever is karma. However, because Creator decreed that free will takes precedence over all, everything in the contracts that there even is a contract must be forgotten when souls embody. Actually, this is a good arrangement otherwise every lifetime would be merely following some schedule instead of freely making decisions and learning from the results. And, guidance in line with contracts is permitted via the soul's messages to the consciousness, but everyone has the free will to heed that guidance or stray far afield. Either way, Souls incur karma and it is neither good nor bad it is the means whereby the last lifetime can be balanced in the next one by completing the karma, or karmic lessons, in the soul contract. Sometimes events and lives before contracts can be completed. Such was the case in two recent occurrences, and we shall share with you what we learned about them from colleagues in Nirvana. Of the 150 persons aboard German Wings Flight 9525, only three had reached the window of flexibility in their contract's longevity clause that is, those individuals had completed their selection of karmic lessons, missions and other experiences, and they would have transitioned to spirit life in some manner within days or weeks. Upon arriving in Nirvana, Every person was lovingly received and greeted by name, etheric bodies were strengthened, and tender, customized care was given to treat all psychic trauma that occurred at any time prior to the crash. Throughout the healing period, members of the medical team in the soul transition field were in constant attendance. As these recent arrivals became ready to join others in your spirit world, each was given choices of residence and diverse activities, and all who had not completed their contracts also were offered three options. Finish karmic lessons in Nirvana, where living and learning is far more joyous than on earth. Receive full credit for lessons partially learned and, in a new agreement with other souls, embody relatively quickly to wind up the rest of the original contract and add whatever is desired in the new lifetime. The third option is, in an agreement with someone on earth, arrange for a soul transference, or walk in the advantage of saving years by entering an adult body instead of a newborn's, but because there are serious challenges too, rarely is this a soul's choice. We want to speak about another aspect of the plane crash. The consensus of your analysts is that the co-pilot, Andreas Lobitz, planned to commit suicide by deliberately crashing the plane, disregarding the lives of all others on board. That is not so, according to the medical team giving personalized care to treat Andreas' traumatized psyche, 
which is recovering slowly due to his depth of despair when he learned what had happened. What was used as evidence to substantiate the consensus was the young man's determined efforts to overcome his emotional fragility, including Internet information he felt he could use in positive ways to fortify healthy thought processes especially during flights. Moments after the pilot left the cockpit, Andreas' consciousness snapped he has no memory of that instant or what transpired afterwards. If this could be known, although it would not console those who loved the people who went down with the plane, it could give some peace of mind and heart to Andreas' family and friends. We should add that he was not one of the three persons who had completed their contracts. The second occurrence is the massacre at a Kenyan university by Al Shabaab terrorists, where almost the same number of lives were lost as in the plane crash. However, none of the contracts of persons who died in the university carnage contained a lifespan that would end at that time, and all have the same aforementioned three options. We wish everyone could know the loving reception and personalized care given every person whose life was ended then. But their families and dear friends know only the heartbreak of shocking loss and your world reels from barbaric behavior that is incomprehensible. Some of the survivors' contracts include a traumatic, non-lethal experience with flexibility as to the type and timing and during what took place at the university fulfills that provision. Survivors who didn't need that experience for balance may put it in safekeeping, in a way, for credit in a different lifetime or give it to someone in the agreement group whose struggle with karmic lessons was more difficult than anticipated. In either case, the survivor's desire would propel an energy streamer in the appropriate direction. If survivors whose wounds have life-changing results outside their contracts, amendments will be made at soul level to provide other experiences that will make their lives as meaningful and fulfilling as they had chosen. Because the perpetrators of the attack far exceeded their contract provisions that would have balanced previous experiences, they incurred karma that could require several lifetimes before balance is achieved. In Nirvana, just as on Earth, Ever heightening vibrations would energetically bar psychic and cellular patterning with karma of that severity. When those persons die, their lifetime energy automatically will draw them to the spirit world of some low third density civilization and their next incarnation will be in that population. There is another aspect of pre birth agreements, which are designed for the spiritual and conscious growth of all participants in the shared lifetime when one person's life ends prior to contract completion, it affects all others in the group beyond profound emotions. For adults this can include the spouse, children, parents, siblings, other relatives, friends, colleagues, everyone else with whom the person had close bonds and those with whom bonds would have developed in later years. When a premature transition happens to a child, in addition to family there can be classmates, teachers and friends as well as all others who would have become important in that youngster's life throughout the chosen lifespan. The contracts of every person who had or would have had a significant role in the lifetime that was cut short must be amended to provide all of those individuals with equivalent opportunities to complete their karmic lessons. The original and subsequent matching up of souls happens in the continuum, where everything is happening simultaneously. Everyone's part in an agreement is important. However, Individuals' contracts and their purpose can vary considerably. For instance, one soul can agree to be the captain, so to say, to give other participants the opportunity to strengthen their weaknesses in one or more areas that this soul has mastered such as patience, generosity, humility, forgiveness, compassion, self-discipline, honesty, kindness, wise parenting, industriousness. In these cases, the captain serves the others not by criticizing their shortcomings, but by exemplifying admirable attitudes and behavior that the others may be inspired to emulate. Or, a soul can agree to exhibit characteristics that are undesirable, 
perhaps jealousy, uncontrolled anger, self-centeredness, laziness, arrogance, stinginess, resentfulness or untrustworthiness. If by observing that person's hurtful, offensive or counterproductive behavior the others in the agreement learn not to behave in those ways, they can balance other lifetimes wherein one or more of those traits were dominant. If an individual is to become widely known and respected, the captain team arrangement can be reversed and include a small number of participants whose values, accomplishments, encouragement and assistance are strong incentives for the designated individual to adhere to high standards, persevere despite opposition and setbacks, and continue striving until noteworthy achievements are attained. This can be the case even if the individual credits a specific person as the source of inspiration for his or her success. Usually souls choose to live in impoverished circumstances to balance a lifetime of riches and ease, with little or no interest in helping people in dire need. When a soul embodies in a region ravaged by war and poverty and is orphaned as a youngster who must make his own way from then on, it can be to experience the fear and severe hardships that have befallen children due to this soul's actions in a different lifetime. A soul may choose a brief life in a loving family in a peaceful environment to rest after a long, tiring life of toil and to serve other purposes too. The loss of a child offers family members the opportunity to channel grief into meaningful endeavors. It also can strengthen family bonds or tear them apart whichever the others may need for balance. As our examples show, agreements can contain many participants or only a few, and none of them knows what had been agreed upon. If your conscience is comfortable with your decisions that affect the lives of others, that is an indication that you are acting in accordance with your contract role, but there is no way to know if the primary people in your life are following or seriously departing from theirs that is why spiritual guidance is do not judge others. Never does this mean condoning actions you deem unjust or reprehensible, but rather that you refrain from judging the persons. If light really is increasing on the planet, why is there still so much violence and brutality? In previous messages we have said that one effect of increasing light intensity is the magnification of human characteristics and behavior good becomes better, bad becomes worse. The majority of people in your world are responding positively by being kinder, more thoughtful, generous, cooperative, helpful and open-minded. That doesn't make headline news, so you don't hear about them. However, even though mainstream media's main focus still is on individuals and organized groups whose actions are violent and brutal, coverage is including positive developments as well. You are hearing about innovations in renewable energy sources and breakthroughs in medical research. Citizens revitalizing their villages, towns or cities. Expanding efforts in environmental preservation and restoration. And, occasionally, multimillionaires who are sharing their wealth abundantly. Indeed a great deal more must be done and shall be but please honor yourselves as we do and celebrate with us your sterling progress to date. You who know you are light workers and the many millions who also are but may not even know that word are the vanguard of your society, the ones who are steadily moving your world in positive directions. Let us give you an example of the positive and negative aspects of light's magnification. After years of punitive measures against Iran for its nuclear development program, a series of talks between leaders of that country and others recently produced a framework for a diplomatic solution, with both sides making concessions to reach that initial stage of cooperation. Most in your world welcomed this as a positive albeit tenuous first step, yet it was soundly denounced by the increased negativity of individuals within Illuminati ranks or under their influence who want this issue handled with military might. Only the peak of the Illuminati still are holding on to the delusion that further destabilizing the Mideast will let them gain control of that region and continue their march toward global domination. 
Readers have asked if the following assertions are true an asteroid is going to destroy Earth in September. A militarized police force will round up dissidents in the United States and incarcerate them in FEMA-operated camps. Foreign troops have been brought in to kill Americans because U.S. military won't shoot their own citizens. Many millions will drown as seas rise and inundate coastlines far inland. The cabal is controlling people's minds through inoculations containing programmed microchips. The Illuminati will cause global chaos by creating a hologram of invading ETs that they will claim are forces of the Antichrist. This or that red flag terrorist act will be the excuse for imposing martial law. A dark civilization pretending to be benevolent is surrounding planet Earth. WWII will be started by the intentional or accidental launch of a nuclear missile. Delivery of prosperity packages is imminent. The cabal is preparing areas beneath a number of buildings to be temporary living quarters, escape routes and or arsenals. Those are samples of distorted information, uninformed opinions or skewed interpretations, long outdated contingency plans, long outdated potential land sea changes, scare tactic lies, or falsehoods in messages channeled by base entities claiming to be respected light sources. And, just as not all information on the Internet is valid, neither is everything that mediums tell their clients. A reader wrote what a friend told her a medium had told him the people on Earth would be transported to a very large planet that is big enough to hold the population of the Earth. It would be a trip of several weeks to save us, because the environment on Earth has become uninhabitable. It is a friendly more advanced group who said they were offering their help for a better, peaceful, and loving experience that sounded pleasant. The reader added her question Do you know if people will be moved off planet Earth in a year ending in nine? We tell you this, dear ones, because you are deluged with information, some of it shocking or frightening, a lot of it conflicting, and we know that at times it is difficult for you to discern what is true and what isn't. When your thoughts aren't clear about an issue you feel as important, ask within for the answer. Then quiet your mind and listen to what comes from your heart and soul. God said, The heart is the seat of the soul, and the soul knows the truth. Someone who knew that my mother's recent trip included visiting our family in Peru asked if extraterrestrials were involved in the disappearance of Incas from Mishi Piku or the ancient buildings with precisely fitting boulders that weigh as much as a hundred tons. You may be interested in the answers. When the residents of Mishi Piku heard that Spanish forces had reached Cusco and were continuing their bloody conquest downward from that high elevation, they started building a trail down the other side of their lower Andean community. When it was ready, they started their journey to safety and the last in line disguised the trail's beginning. Although that was discovered along with the ruins, little or no connection has been made between the trail and its purpose. To accommodate the Peruvians' desire for high, strong walls and monuments, members of advanced civilizations living among them use teleportation, levitation and laser technology. Similar assistance was given in other areas where mammoth rocks also had to be transported many miles to the erection sites, for pyramids or structures like Stonehenge and the heads on Easter Island. The people living in those times were grateful for the extraterrestrials' friendship and help. Dear ones, you have infinitely more reason to feel grateful your universal family saved the very life of your homeland planet about 80 years ago and they have been helping you in vitally important ways since then. Lighted beings throughout this universe are eagerly awaiting the day when people from other civilizations who are in ships above you, residing among you or living in inner earth can greet you as the beloved family members you are. Love and Peace Suzanne Ward Susie at MateTheBooks.com Matthew Ward's Message, as received by Susie Ward, April 23, 2015, at 
www.matthewbooks.com